Hello, beautiful light filled souls. So thank you so much for tuning in to my uh, my interviews. I'm putting up a few from the summit last year, and I appreciate that support. I love meeting with you in spiritual community and one on one theta healings, medium readings. Also really love coaching writers who are writing about spirituality or memoir or creative um, works of fiction. It's just so much fun for me to talk about the writing journey and to co-write uh, with you. So love those groups and love connecting with you here on YouTube. Today is a bit of a ramble, but I want to cover some common questions and really just kind of tune into the energy of the world right now. I don't like making too many predictions, but I do like to see what we can heal right now to manifest a uh, brighter, more light-filled future. So the question I was asked recently in an interview was, how do you trust intuition and how do you know that healing works? Well, intuition can come in many various forms, you know, that can be uh, ignited by a moment of trauma. So say you nearly avoid an accident in traffic and you felt an energy that supported you by helping you avoid that moment, or you saw something, or you had a visual, or you heard a message, or visually there was something implanted in your mind, or you just had a feeling ahead of time. Intuition can come in so many different ways. Where we get off track is how we interpret it. And many times it's our fears that start adding a lot to that actual message. You know, the message may be pretty simple, but our fear-based thinking or any trauma from the past may start adding details to that intuition and creating, um, you know, a messy situation. Or, you know, we could have too much wishful thinking <laughs> associated with a moment of intuition. So someone who is simply in a space of uh, receiving the message maybe doesn't add too much from their mind to that message. They're just aware, okay, this message was given. I avoided this moment in traffic. There is energy supporting me from being in this particular accident today. Sometimes you can be called to do something and you don't understand why until you're in the process of doing it and i love it when intuition works that way because simply it's just like there's someone knocking on the door of your soul saying hey it's time to get busy it's time to do this thing and if you show up you will be supported along the way so how do you get rid of fear i love theta healing because I believe we all have ancestral trauma. We all have trauma from society and from our own past and our own experiences. And the more work we can proactively do uh, to add healing, to add release, to add new programs to these, these things running in our bodies, then the better our life experience is going to be. But also staying present in that moment and just aware of when your triggers come up from the past and clearing them in that moment can also be helpful. So there's proactive work, there's work in the very moment of, of a situation. And then there is just giving your life to a higher power, to a higher calling, to an energy that has an intelligence beyond yours. You know, you're getting perhaps a piece of that cosmic intelligence through intuition, something that is beyond your conscious brain. So perhaps some of your problems can't be solved by your own thinking or even by the little bits of intuition that you get. You have to give it to a much larger, unconditionally loving source. So how can you tell if intuition is real? Well, it's great when you have verifiable moments. In my book, Angels in the OR, I write about some of those early moments with my grandfather and how he helped me get out of some jams. I literally heard his voice on the other side and he told me to turn here, go to this store, do this, call this person. And it's great, you know, when intuition works like that. Uh, I would say be open in moments of great transition 
because intuition almost always is there, whether you're hearing it or not, your ancestors, your angels, your loved ones are supporting you in moments of trauma, in moments of great transition. You may feel completely alone, but I promise you, you are not. And that is the number one thing. But what about when everything's going right <laughs> and everything's wonderful? Uh, you could wake up and just ask for more of that support throughout your day. And ask for your intuition to grow in the ways that are beautiful and convenient to you. So I've talked about moments when I visually saw angels or visually saw spirits and I wouldn't want to go around most of my day visually seeing all these things that would be overwhelming. So I work with my own intuition for it to turn on, you know, for it to be there for me at specific times in the specific ways that I'm comfortable with. And I think a lot of readers and mediums have learned to do that through time or have taken courses with how to work with energy in a way that uh, doesn't overwhelm them, you know, but still works for their clients or for the people who are receiving the messages. So that's my first uh, bit of this ramble. The second thing that I wanna talk about is really the current state of the world. I don't like to give future predictions, but I do want to just empathize with everything that you are feeling, whether you are getting whatever news source you are watching, whatever um, you believe about the world, I simply want to empathize with your situation. And when you give empathy to others and you give empathy to yourself, you begin to find solutions. And I think that's where we need to begin in this world is offer empathy to ourselves and offer empathy to others. And, and remember that uh, violence is never the true answer, that unconditional love is the greatest healer. And this place can seem primitive at times because these messages you know, from you know me, a YouTuber, a community college professor, is it is it really spreading? Is it really making a difference? Even though many people are saying the same things all across the globe, love is all that matters and all that we take with us. Why are we seeing so much continued trauma in society? Why are we not recognizing our connection to one another? Why are we not recognizing our connection to nature? You know, we can look around and find evidence all day long that these messages are not taking root, but we can find evidence that they are, that these messages are spreading and that we're in a process of change and in that process of change it's a little messy things are unraveling at times but i keep getting this image in many readings from many different people of you know the earth becoming very different that we walk on having a deeper connection almost as if things are rolling out in a more natural and beautiful way for each of us. And you have to trust that process. And you have to trust that this change is indeed beautiful, is indeed good, is indeed healing. And then a lot of people that I'm talking to are feeling like they didn't accomplish the mission that they came here to do. You know, that on the soul level, we had a particular mission and at the end of one's life you know there might be this feeling of i didn't do enough uh this this didn't take hold <sighs> having done many past life regressions it's okay <laughs> you know like it's perfectly fine if it didn't you know like it that's not how that we transition into the other side how we transition into the other side is one with great compassion and one with great love for all that we tried to do. All that our heart and our soul wanted to do here, wanted others to see, that's what we take with us, is what we loved. And so it isn't so much, you know, that did you move a, a great mountain? Did you change, you know, an entire city? No, um, but maybe you saved someone from suicide with a kind note that you wrote. Maybe you help someone get sober. Maybe you uh, 
uh, affected someone's life in a way that you'll never know until you're on the other side and you look at that and you see this amazing, glorious gift. And it's often not the accomplishments, it's the kindness that we see both for ourselves and for others back to that moment of empathy. So I've been reading and listening to a lot more of Marshall Rosenberg, who teaches nonviolent communication. And nonviolent communication is simply listening um, and not judging. And it's also looking for um, ways to meet the needs of others and to get your needs met and to say these needs in a way that is nonviolent and non-judgmental and is open to someone saying, no, I can't do that at this time, or that's not within my means of how I can help you, but I hope you find that, you know, like you can still experience empathy and not get your needs met from a particular person. Maybe they'll offer you a solution or they'll offer you a um, another avenue to get those particular needs met, but your needs and your feelings are important so are other people's needs and feelings. And that's the basis of nonviolent communication. I'll put one of his links below, but I've been thinking about how this connects to near-death experiences and our interactions in the world. And what I have, the conclusion that I have found is that I felt in that near-death experience so much empathy from God, from creator, from source so much unconditional love and in small ways i've tried to give that to students i've tried to pass that along into the world and i've tried to give it to myself as well and i think that creates a more peaceful classroom it creates a more peaceful world when we do offer empathy to ourselves and others and how do you do that practically you know when someone is violent uh, or in violent situations well, it takes someone really skilled at this. Like you might be a novice. You know, I was a novice in certain ways. Um, I felt like less of a novice in classrooms, but still a novice in my personal life with nonviolent communication. It's it's not taught to us. Uh, that's not what we are schooled in. So it's a learning process. And so committing to your growth and your learning and your own communication skills until you become a master uh is is important you know it's it's um i i grade myself because i can't there's a judger inside me and i'm like okay i did like you know an 82 on that conversation <laughs> you know uh, was it was it a little judgy yeah it was a little judgy <laughs> you know like i i will look at myself and I'll, I'll use some humor around that but it's a growing process you know we are growing out of judgment and into deeper unconditional love you know i will say this over and over, and I hope my book proved it, and I hope, you know, just knowing me through YouTube, I do not claim to be, um, you know, made whole or made perfect or always make the right decisions because I had this near-death experience. I had a world of trauma before it. I felt great healing during that near-death experience certainly changed, but I still had trauma to work through and trauma that I created after that experience and experience because of this messy world this world is messy and if you're a deeply feeling person you're going to uh feel great grief and great pain on this journey and yet the answer the joy is always you know that that lighter soul perspective which is hey your soul's trying it's doing its best here and give yourself credit for that keep learning and as far as you know I know a lot of spiritual teachers and a lot of different people um weigh in on the new earth and the way i see it energetically is that energetically we do create different experiences for ourselves and so maybe more of us are waking up to being more in tune with a deeper reality, an unconditional love, a closeness to nature, uh, a, a different way of being. And so there is hope that more of us are waking up and creating this around us in our communities, in the ways that we interact with others. But I, I cannot claim to speak for countries or political organizations or the future. You know, I've interviewed a variety of people who've had visions and seeing different things 
um, in their near death experiences. That wasn't my message. My, my message was remind them to go to nature and love is all that you take with you when you leave and be like a little child. So those three particular messages are messages that can be dissected uh, until the end of time, <laughs> really. But when you have faith like a little child, you can move great mountains, you can make great change in this world, but you have to stay open even when you feel exhausted, even when you feel like you have tried everything possible to move forward. That's usually when the breakthrough happens. So don't give up, um, remain innocent and remain pure at some level and especially in your relationship with creator. And when I say remind them to go to nature, there's so much healing there, yes, but we are a part of nature and we have forgotten that. And so as, as a society way too often. So don't forget your connection to nature and don't beat yourself up for mindless moments as well. You know, like there are moments when, um, you know, I've shopped mindlessly and I just walked into a store and thought I needed certain things that I really didn't need. And then I've beaten myself up for it. And there are years I've gone and not bought a single material thing um, just to teach myself conservation. Uh, so, you know, we are uh, living in an imperfect world. Don't beat yourself up for choices that you make, but also just offer empathy to yourself, to others, because that's where the shift begins, is in that moment of self empathy and empathy for others. So thank you for listening. And I hope you'll tune in to future interviews. May you be blessed.